Greetings and welcome to another Diablo 4 build video. More like a build update on the Centipede build that I already showed you. Uh, you can find that initial video in the description below. I'm not gonna go through all the single paragon and skills again, but in the essence I will explain how the build works. And uh, yeah, I made some changes from the initial uh, build, or I evolved it, I would say. I got more paragon, I'm already almost at 200 where the whole build is actually coming together and we have like all our five paragon bots and our glyphs so that is pretty nice and it gives us a bit more power so we are clearing uh torment free uh, pit level 50 is what i'm showing in a second uh, but let's go uh, quickly over the abilities so we are uh, barely using withering fist just sometimes uh, against bosses to make them deal less damage we don't really need it stinger is our main uh main core ability, I mean it's core ability, yes, our main ability. And then we have unrestrained powers giving us a huge boost with our ultimate uh, giving us unstoppable and also toxic skin giving us unhindered, so you can play off both. And then uh, I also got Scourge and of course here's some uh, more damage with Apex and then Nourishment and Touch of Death, it's another main skill of ours and I got a lot of points in the Ravenous due to gear. And then the Devourer is one of our also our main skills, it is always up. The cooldown is actually lower than it was stated here because of our loyalties mantle that reduces cooldown by 60% and only shows when you are outside of town. So key things are using the ultimate with Supremacy, which gives a huge bonus up to 30% more damage. With this one uh, giving you unstoppable for 6 seconds and giving us 24x more damage. And then also Intricacy, so whatever defensive potency or focus skill we use before using the ultimate skill, we get uh, three more like three charges to free cast it without cooldown. So you're gonna use it with Touch of Death mostly against bosses, and a Scourge against like Trash, uh, because it has like an AOE and it's pretty nice. Um, and Touch of Death is sometimes hard to aim, or it's actually you can miss it with Controller because it's just sometimes not really hitting the enemy. Anyways, uh, then we get Nox Resonance, of course, and then uh, with the critical strike damage bonus that we have, this is also something that I'm, I heavily leaned into now, after like, uh, like with the changes I've made since the uh, last um, iteration, or since the first iteration, uh, that I have more critical strike damage bonus, giving us more, more damage. Okay, then <clears throat> we go over the uh, Paragon, just uh, uh, quickly. I got the uh, fitness right here for more crit strike damage, we just talked about that. I got consumption here for more damage with pestilent swarm active, which is like 10 to 15, 14 pestilent swarms are active normally. There's enough monsters and I'm using stinger enough. And then we got convergence right here, giving us more damage overall. We got the fester with more centipede damage, always welcome, and more damage against crowd control. And I also got the sapping here. Also giving me more damage when I'm using centipede skills in a row, which I'm only using anyways. Then revealing, giving me more damage against crowd control, together with uh, Bane right here. Makes sense, more poison damage. And then up here I got the Colossal for now. It's actually not good. Um, I need to see um, Kenny would be better, for example. But I like it for the revol Resolve increased damage per stack of Resolve. And damage to close enemies, it's something we can use. We are not using Gorilla damage, but it's actually negligible, like 40% additive is like whatever. We we really like the um, multiplier of uh, damage per stack of Resolve. So Resolve, to just get it out of the way, we get through the uh, Tenacity. Um, and Resolve is always like up. And I also got max Resolve stacks. The Tempo is not great, but at least it gets one more max Resolve stack. And since we have Vigor around 122 and we're like generating Vigor very, very uh, quickly, we always have like 9 to 10 stacks of Resolve up, which means we have 20x more damage. Going from top, Loyalty's Mantle. Since we are using Centipede, uh, Double Centipede in Spirit, this will help us, uh, giving us Vigor cost reduction and huge cooldown reduction. So you can always have the Devourer up. It's not a problem. And then again, like Tenacity, uh, we have Insatiable right here to boost our touch of death. We have the Binding Morris to give us a 20x multiplier damage against load enemies. If you go to the Spirit Hall, you can see that 
Hitting an enemy with a centipede skill reduces their damage, which stacks up to 8 times, so it reduces them by 22%. If I just quickly made them... No, 20%, sorry. <laughs> 22 what? 20% less damage that we get and slows them up to 80%, which is huge. And why this is huge, I will tell you in a second. And then also it heals too, so we have a lot of uh, sustain. So going through it again, and then we have Ragnar Swag. It just gives us a huge bonus to all res, which is all maxed out. Well, I'm right now sitting in Torment 1. It doesn't, ma Torment 1, it doesn't matter because we're doing the, the pit to show off the, the strength of the build. So it doesn't matter where you sit on, but this one is for the all res, cooling reduction, non fist damage, movement speed. It has everything that we want, aside from the unique effect, which is not great, not huge. It procs pretty often, but it's not doing like huge amounts of damage. And we got the quarter star for the block chance with like dex and damage and max life. This is not optimal. The crit strike damage and ravenous is great. These are really, really great tempers. But I would like to have like damage over time instead of uh, pure damage or instead of max life even because we don't really need that much max life. But overall, this is I'm pretty happy with this and it has the pestilence for the pestilence swarms. And I uh, use Stinger. The amulet is still not ancestral. What about that? I actually have one sitting, but I haven't uh, been gotten around to, to masterwork and to temper it yet. I think I have one pretty neat one somewhere here. Tax speed and crit chance is something that I'm looking at. Uh, although in my current one, I really like the ravenous and the may, may just roll off the, the maximum life. So, yeah. Um, here I got the pestilence spawn damage temper. I actually want something different. I also don't want velocity, but it, it was already locked in. So if I, this is also another point why I would use another amulet. Uh, we would get something different right here. Um, like, for example, we get more crit strike damage instead. Like, for example, this ring, which is the infestation, he uh, has crit strike damage and it crit strike damage temper, which is, like, huge. Uh, going back to the amulet, we have apprehension. This is also new uh, compared to the first iteration. And here you can see once an enemy is slowed by at least 80%, they also become feared for 3 seconds and they deal 50x increased damage to feared enemies. It's a huge, huge multiplier. And since we are using the Spirit Hall Centipede, they are slowed a lot. And this actually procs like faster than I thought. I think I have some other things that uh, slow the enemy. So this is really, really nice. Uh, and then uh, here, Infestation, again, um, a bit more Pestilence Worms, um, which is neat. And Rifling moon, moon, which makes my Pestilence Worms go, go around me. And overall, the stats here on this ring are pretty, pretty good. Right, Mercenary, lastly, um, I think I just got Subu right now because I want to level up his report still. Um, Scorched Earth is nice for more damage over time. And then um, I think I want this one, because then uh, if he hits someone with snipe, another Molotov explodes, so I get another increased damage over time. So this is nice. If you need more survivability, you can use Rahir, of course, uh, giving you like Fortify, which is also cool. And then I got Vayana with Earthbreaker to knock down enemies to give me even more crowd control whenever she is ready to do so. Uh, I think that's everything. Oh, Rune Bullets, right. Um, I got this one, Monigar, which is... Uh, cast a skill after moving, we're moving a lot, we're casting a lot, and we get crit strike chance. Um, I still have that, it, there's probably something better out there, but I like to have a bit more uh, crit, uh, crit strike chance. Right now I'm sitting on 41, and then with this all the way up, I'm sitting on like 66, which I really like. Not in town. Um, and then we got Voracious, Lo uh, sorry, Poctal, which means spending 100% of my maximum resource. I'm invoking a Pestilent Swarm. Which again is a bit more damage and uh oh well i think there's still room for improvement i think i can pro forgo about the pestilence one a bit or maybe lean more into it i'm not sure but i love to hear your yeah your opinion or maybe your insights maybe you toy around with this build as well since i published this first video maybe you want some cool combination that uh, i'd love for you to share this one probably uh, sorry this one is also not ancestral uh the gauntlets but yeah, so I'm not at the end of my rope here yet. There's still potential. Let's call it potential. Anyways, with all that being said, I tried to make it fast. 
I even tried to talk fast, that's what I stumbled a bit in my speech. Uh, but still took 10 minutes to go over the build. Huh? Again, the uh, build is in the description below, not only the link to the first video, but also the link to a, uh, what do you say, written guide? It's not really written out, but you know what I mean, like the build planner. You can also look it up there in your own time. Yeah, it is not the fastest build. There are other builds that are broken and super fast. Um, but what we're trying to do here is being flavorful. Flavorful with Centipede, trying to make it work, trying to make it stronger, trying to achieve something without just being like a cookie cutter build that just gets handed everything. Not saying it's bad to run like these super powerful builds, it's it's also super fun. But for me, like some of the fun lies in um whoops, I need to pay attention. I'm doing this live. Uh, some of the fun lies in uh, getting a build that I like to play and making it like stronger, making it try to, to beat everything. And uh, we're not there yet, we need to beat uh, moment 4. But we might just be getting there. Might be not, maybe this is the limit of the build, we will see. And yeah, it's not the fastest, but it's super tanky, right? I mean, I don't have any problem whatsoever standing and everything and you you will see at the end with the boss that I can just face tank the boss and not even not even care for the most part. I mean there are some like I don't know if there's still one shot abilities but after some time you get like more and more damage from these shadow attacks. So of course you just evade them now and then but for the most part I can just uh, stand in the boss and don't give a give a damn. And it still goes down fairly quick. Really happy with the uh, boss damage. Because sometimes you have these builds that are really, really good at clearing trash, but they are really, really terrible at clearing bosses. But this ain't not that build, that kind of build. This is a. To me, it's a very sturdy build that makes you click your buttons, yeah, as you may have seen already. I'm clicking like Scourge, I'm clicking my ultimate. Every time it's up, it gives me that huge multiplier as well, and unstoppable. Then I'm using um, my toxic skin, and my ultimate is around like 5 seconds cooldown left. So I can use the unhindered to give me the multiplier. And then I'm using a combination of touch of death and scourge to apply more damage, or crowd control. For Trash, I like to use Scourge because of the AoE, AoE Fear as well. Not ready yet. But for bosses, I think Touch of Death does more damage, although Scourge gives you a huge stagger bonus. So you need to find out for yourself what you value more. Boom. Oh no, it's the wolf! Boing. And also like keep in mind what you cast before your ultimate, because then you get three free casts of it. Not ready. Funny enough, it seems a bit a bit bug because sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Also, you wanna try to use Scourge every time it's on an uh, off cooldown, because it gets some stacks, giving you more card control damage. Or damage to card control monsters. There you go, not a problem, very easy. You can also push higher pits, but I don't see like the benefit of it because it just is uh, slower and you can get all these glyphs already to legendary as I did. I Actually, I got some of them to legendary by just clearing pit 45, if I remember correctly. Of course, the success chance will be uh, sitting around 70%, but it's still good enough to get them up there. And now we can even... Uh, I don't want this gorilla thing. Now we can even get them higher and higher. And yeah, this is the update to the um, centipede build. Uh, it's even stronger now. Again, um, I'm sitting in world torment one, but I cleared. I just cleared pit tier fifty, which gives you access to torment three, and we can do torment three, I believe, with no issues. 
but the uber bosses like durian and Daryl might still be a bit tricky or might still take a long time on torment 3 but there's still room for, for improvement for for this build love to hear your thoughts in the comments and if you watch it until this end thank you so much and see you in the next one good luck have fun and goodbye